Okay, guys, we've got kind of an interesting thing that we're doing right here. So, I wanted to make a video showing voltage drop. And it wasn't working out too well on my idea, because most of the classes that I've been to, they always say that you can't flow a lot of current through one strand of wire. So, like, right here is a completely intact wire. So, they always said... If you only have like one strand left or anything like this, I think there there might be like three strands left. You can't flow the same amount of current. So I was trying that to show voltage drop. And it didn't really work. So what I have here, we got my Odyssey battery right here set up. We have an amp clamp. This is on the green channel. Like I did in the test light video. And then the blue channel from the Pico scope is connected right here. This is coming right from the battery. So it's going through a, like 10 feet of wire, comes to here. Okay. Then we've got a red trace, which is this wire, coming right here. And then I have them all grounded right here. And then I got the multimeter. So we'll turn this on. Got it on a 20 volt scale. So we can measure the voltage drop using a meter too. And then the meter leads are right here and right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire. So here's our, we'll start with our, our good. This will be our control wire. So set that up like that. I'll clamp this on here. So there we go. That should be set up. Let me make sure that you guys can see that okay. Okay, it looks like you guys can see it okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the ground on the battery and this is going to light and we'll see our voltage drop. So there we go. We'll let that run to the end. Let's our meter show. 0 0.09 volts of drop. Okay, so we might have to move ourselves up just a little bit so there we go oh, let's see. Okay, okay. so now if you look at the Pico scout you can see we pulled around like 13 amps or so 13 amps and we'll just leave that there in the middle hold on let's see if we can there we go just look at that in the middle and then we'll look at our voltage so our blue trace was around 10 volts. Our red trace at the same spot. Measure these at like the same spot. So there we go, they're both kind of in the middle. So there you go, so we had like a tenth of a volt, which is pretty close to what our meter said. So now, we'll change wires, and this is completely cold to the touch too, by the way. We'll look at temperatures then. But that's completely cold. So we'll look at this one. This one has half the wires in it. So there we go. So now we'll do the same test again. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So there we go, that was our exact same test. So now, we're actually seeing a little bit more of a voltage drop. I didn't get to see what it showed on the meter. I should have looked at that first. Let's connect this back up. So about 200 millivolts. 
of voltage drop. And what are we seeing on here? Pretty close to 200 millivolts. We got 10.82 and then 10.57. So we're seeing a 200 millivolt drop. And what did our current go down to? Our current looks a lot lower. It's 13.2 amps. So now, we'll go down one more. So I think this has about three quarters of the wire going. So we'll do this one. Here we go. So we're seeing about 300 millivolts, 350 millivolts on our meter. So now, let's see what our voltage drop is. Looks like 3.7 volts on the Pico scope. And the middle of our current's around 13.19 amps. So 13.19. So we're not seeing too much of a deviation here in current. So now we'll go down to this one that has like what, two or three strands left. You can see how flimsy it is. I gotta be really careful because this thing does heat up and it gets very brittle. So now we'll do this test again. Let's see. So now you can see we have almost a half a volt of voltage drop. There we go. Let's look at her. Let's look at our voltage drop. So you can see that. We have almost a half a volt on the Pico scope. And our current at 12.97. So our current did not drop that much. Did not drop that much at all. So we saw what? Like like 200 milliamp difference between this wire and this wire. Now what we can do is we can look at we can do a longer time base here. We can do like over time, like do like a five second or so. See what it changes, we can go backwards real quick. So here we go. You can see where it levels off. So that way it's more controlled. We can also turn the thermal camera on, see what our temperature is at. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it once this turns on. So like Right now we're at 150 degrees, 170, right on the casing, 180, 190, it's like 200. Now, like you can't see it in the middle because it's a it's copper wire, so you can only look at the casing. Looks like we're around 2:30. Can start to see a little bit of smoke coming off of it, but like I will tell you this, this thing will run here for like 10 minutes or so before it really starts melting down. So I was trying this for a couple of hours yesterday and you can see the wire ain't even glowing. 
So we'll shut this off and go back to the picoscope. Look to see what our current ended up being. So we're at 12.82 amps. 9 volts. 9 point. Okay, so pretty much 10 volts. So we saw about a half a volt voltage drop right there with just that little bit of wire left. So now we'll go up to the next one. You can see it just started to melt the end of the casing right there. So now we'll go up to this one. Mm -hmm. We'll do the same test all over again. Grab our thermal camera too. So we got 0.35 amps, I mean 3.5 volts. And we'll look at our temperatures. So this one's at about 100. 100 degrees or so. And you got to think about something too. This is like a stationary test. So if this is on a car, you may see a hotter temps, like if this is under the engine bay when you're stopped. But you also, if you're moving, you may not even notice anything because it'll be cooled. See that we're like 130 degrees. You can see it's not climbing too fast because uh, the copper is a good conductor of heat, conductor of heat, so it's going to get pulled, pulled away by the wire. Like it's going to get pulled into the good sections. So let's see what this is. So, come up a little bit. So we're at 12.86 amps. And, yeah, like, this is showing like 370 milliamps. I mean, millivolts of difference, of voltage drop. So, like, this one didn't even really melt. I don't even see anything in the casing. I thought it might have been melted there a little bit, but it's, uh, where I cut the wire off. So we'll go back to this one. So this one has like half the conductor left. So there we go. Oh, whoops. Turn this off. There we go. So now this one. So we got 220 millivolts of voltage drop. See, we're around 80 degrees. See, it's not really going up too much. We're staying around 90 degrees or so. Maybe 100 degrees there. I moved in more. So yeah, we're staying around 100 degrees. It's not really climbing. So we'll take that off. We'll look at this. Now you can see our current's slightly lower. The bulbs are warming up, so that is a variable to this test. But you can see our voltage drop. It's 2200 millivolts according to that. So now we'll go back to this one. Our control. Here we go. Now, if we look at this one, look at that, our voltage drops 180. Probably shouldn't move that while it's on, but. Hang on 
let me redo this. I don't think we're wrapped on to one here. There we go. Now let's do this again. There we go. So yeah, you can see this wire is around 90 degrees. This is 14 gauge wire. It's copper wire and it's made in the USA. There we go, we're around 98 degrees or so, 100 degrees. So let's look at the peak out. So So we have around 12.86 amps and 150 looks like millivolt a voltage drop. Now, that was with that type of wire. So now what I wanted to show you. Oh, we don't want to lay it on there. It's going to melt it. Let's see. So now I have this wire right here. This is like 10 feet. And there's one strand here. So we'll connect this up. This one only has like 8 strands in this wire. So it has a heavier strand count. And I chose this wire specifically because it, it's pretty close to some automotive wiring. Okay, so we got that set up. Here we go. Uh, oh, I didn't clap it on the other side. Here we go. So there we go. We have almost one volt of voltage drop. And we'll look at the wire. See it's heating up pretty fast. Here at the end. But it's not glowing. Like all the heat's getting absorbed into the wire. See we're at 120 degrees or so. 150 degrees. And all that's going through that one shran. And you can see how bright the bulbs are. So I'm hoping that you guys can see this. So 180 degrees. Let's see if we can bring this current up. Yeah, here's our current. So our current that one strand, that one little strand right there, was still able to flow 12 amps, 12 and a half amps, and our voltage drop, according to the picoscope right here. Is one volt. We're almost, we're, I guess it was 900. What is that? 990 millivolts of voltage drop from that one strand right there. Now, what else I want to show you is, we'll set this up again just so you guys can see it. Connect this up. Now, if I take a jumper, so we'll stack this jumper on here, right here, and we'll take it. I'll move it right here. 
Look at that. That's the difference right there between one strand and a whole new wire. Because see, these other ones still aren't touching. So we can even take this back off. There you go. You can see it drop down. And then we can connect it back up. We'll wait for this to finish. So here we go. So we'll move this over. Measure these at the same spot. So right here with no with just one strand of wire. Oh yeah, that's the wrong spot. So one strand of wire, our voltage drop was one volt. We flowed 10 amps. When we add another wire to fix that, our voltage drop is around 200 millivolts. And our current went up to 12.78. So what's our current difference? So we have a half an amp, just about a half an amp difference between one strand of wire and a whole new wire. Now I don't know how people would really find a damaged wire like that on a car when it's not corroded, like if an animal chews it or something. That's what I was trying to show in this. So if you guys want me to add anything to this or do something different, let me know. I just thought this was kind of interesting. Like I could show you guys, like I'll, like it did get hot enough to melt into the side of that, but I can show you guys, like, we'll connect this right back up here, we'll even let this run longer. Here, we'll do 50 seconds. Or so, wait, actually that's a little bit longer than 50 seconds. There we, there we go, 50 seconds. So we'll put 50 seconds on the scope. We'll connect this up, and I'll show you guys, like, it'll run for a while with just one strand on there. Like, I have the other wire off. Like I can even do a longer time base too. There. Like this this will run for a while with just one wire. Now you start seeing smoke come off the bulbs because the bulbs actually get hot enough that it starts uh, burning the wood underneath. But like this wire is at a hundred it's like 186 degrees or so. Oh, it's not picking it up. I think our current's going high enough to pick up. Now we'll just turn the trigger off. Like you can see that one wire. Still, still not burning up. We're flowing 13 amps through it. We're at 160 degrees, 170 degrees it looks like right now. Oh, now that I'm closer, it's 200. 
But you can see, still didn't melt the casing. The wire's not glowing. So like you don't need a lot to flow current through there. We're still flowing. 12 amps, 12.16. See our voltage drops over a volt. Like our wire ain't melting right now. And guys, we're only measuring the voltage drop through this strand. Like we're not measuring it through the whole circuit. It's just this. This is on. I could show you the other wires. Hopefully, this shows up okay. Like, this is a headlight bulb wire. It only has like, I don't know, eight strands or so in it. Yeah, let's see. This is an OEM one. Actually, it looks like these have about six strands. And you got this one that's from another car. This has five strands in this socket. So like it's pretty heavy wire, they're pretty solid. Like I mean heavy as in there's not a lot of strands, it's not real stranded. And we even have some let's see. Thought I had some other stuff over here. I guess I don't have any other other connectors over here. So we're pretty much using the same like type of wire as in strand count and everything. But look at that. Still ain't glowing. Now if I add another load on here, I think it'll glow if we add this should add like another four amps or so to this. Then it might glow. Yeah, now it's glowing. So it's gonna pop it right there or so. Looks like a giant heating mm -hmm. element. So yeah, that gets it real toasty when you put that in there, but... Man, we're powering headlights and we're even powering the low beam on one of them. Now uh, I can show you guys again real quick what it looks like when you... Like if you fixed it. So there you go. That's the brightness difference. Hopefully it picks that up. You can see it on the meter when I touch it. But I hope you guys like this. Like I said, if you think of anything else you want me to add or do, let me know. Mm. I'll see you guys later.